Jill is running late too. Okay. Uh, welcome everybody. Thank you for coming to our school board meeting tonight. It's 6.08. Mark is recording already. Uh, I wanted to start uh, this meeting just to say thank you to our staff. Uh, I know they had a wonderful in-service uh, day uh, for Martin Luther King's Day, and I'm just excited to to see that work coming through. And I'll let I'm sure Jen is going to update you on that later in her report. Um, but mainly, I just wanted to say that we know how hard it is, and and we feel the stress. And you know, we are just 14 board members, but we are here to to support you and the community is here to support you. And we just wanna thank you for all the work you do. And there's nothing we much we can do to lift that weight, but if we could, we, we would, and we're thinking of you. And then I'll move on also again, because it's School Board Appreciation Month, just to say uh, how much I appreciate all of you. You all bring, you know, something different to the board and your, you know, the diversity of thought that we have in the board, it's, it's just amazing. And I really appreciate all of, all of you. And now with that, any, any public comments, I would like to welcome our guests. So if you could go ahead and raise your hand to give me an idea of how much time we need. I see one hand up, maybe one more minute. Okay, I see just one hand up. So welcome, Jeremy. Thanks very much. I'm Jeremy Hansen. I'm from Berlin. I have two kids in the school system, one at Berlin Elementary, one at U32. Um, I read the article in the Times Argus about the, the property, uh, the school property in Berlin being transferred over to the town. And, I, and as a former select board member and as someone who's kind of tracked the town center project, I am not in favor of that. So the members from Berlin are certainly not alone. I didn't do any sort of big organizing or, you know, talk to a bunch of people um, and try to get them here tonight. I apologize for that, but I know I'm not the only one in Berlin who would, who is against doing that transfer. So I just want to make sure that the, uh, the those of us in Berlin who are against that, at least there's somebody who's not on the board who, who is coming here to let you know about that. So that's, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. We appreciate your input. I don't see any other hands, but there will be a space for public comment right after. Hey, Kari, do you have a? Yeah, Floor, I'm sorry. This is unusual, but I wonder if Jeremy would um, say a few words about why he feels that way, because I haven't. I haven't really heard that point of view articulated. Sure. So um, while I was on the select board, um, this you know the town center effort um, was passed over my negative vote, um, and in part because of the the tax benefits and the tax breaks that are be that were being given essentially, without going into too much detail, out of our property taxes to businesses in the in the town. So, you know. Uh, Walmart applied for tax breaks, Kohl's applied for tax breaks, um, and these were, th these are efforts, these are developments that would have happened anyways. I'm, I'm not convinced that there's, you know, that taking school property and transferring it to the town does really, helps in this respect. Um, I'm, I'm of the opinion that we ought to have um, more in the public, more in, in the commons, and less for the, uh, I mean, less for the benefit of, of private business. I understand economic development. I understand the need for jobs. I, I, I don't think that this is a valuable transaction. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. So moving, <coughs> sorry, moving right along, any agenda, sorry, I'm home alone today and the, hold on a minute. Any agenda revisions? I apologize for that. Any agenda revisions? Okay, so uh, there's a couple that I would like to make if you guys don't have, uh, if your guys are okay with it. We would like to move uh, the annual warning draft that we had at 3.4. 
uh, back to the finance part, and you will understand once we once we get there. So put it under 5.24, and the roof bid will be 5.25. Uh, we just want to have the conversation about the fund balance uh, with that memo that you received today from Suzanne first, and then we'll move into into that. And and that's it. Is that okay with you guys? And then we're going to move right into the Berlin Town Center. Okay, I don't see any heads saying no, so we'll move right away. First, I want to welcome Nick Lowe, who's uh, representing us. Uh, he's our lawyer, and he's here to answer any questions that we might have. I sent a last-minute memo to all of you. Uh, could you please just raise your hand? I didn't hear from anybody, but just make sure that if you could just raise your hand and that you got it and we're able to read it. And all right. Okay, so it, could we, I, I'm trying to figure out how best to start this conversation, Scott. Uh, I can start it by making the motion, then we can discuss the motion if you like. That, that would um, be so, cool. Okay, uh, I'll move that the board approve the memorandum of understanding dated January 19, 2022 regarding conveying a portion of the Berlin Elementary School property to the town of Berlin and to authorize the chair of the board to sign that MOU on behalf of the board. I'll second that. Thank you. Lisa, you got that? Yeah. Okay. So discussion. <clears throat> Questions from the board? Go ahead, Jonas. Um, Floor, under what circumstances would we want to discuss this in open session versus in executive session? I'm, I'm going to let Nick talk about this. I'm just going to give you, I, I really wanted to do this in open session because I think both lawyers have already coordinated. So, but I also wanted to give you that option and that's why I included that, that motion in there, but I let Nick speak to that too. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess that's up to the board. Ultimately, what I can say is that um, you can discuss this in executive session. Uh, it's within, you know, the exceptions that allow the board to go into executive session. Um, and I, we did have that draft um, motion to do that. So I, I, I won't really, um, I don't really have an opinion about whether the board should do that or not. Um, but I would say that you can. Thank you, Nick. Uh, I, Lindy and Chris. I think Chris had his hand raised first and he can't do these little ones, so he can go first. Chris? You're muted, Chris. Um, I'm gonna defer and let Lindy go first. Okay. All right. Um, my comment was in response to the public and last meeting, because my understanding is the town center is a public, it's not a Walmart or a Kohl's that perhaps years ago, there were tax breaks given for those entities, but this is for a municipal building and public paths in order to make this possible. So I, I think that was, I'm looking at this as the good for the town of Berlin in the sense of a, a municipal building as well as um, town recreation. So uh, I just, that, that, that's how I was seeing it. Thank you, Lindy. Uh, Chris? Um, I would urge that we not go into executive session to discuss this um, because I think what would happen is if we go into executive session, uh, folks who may have comments on this uh, proposal, um, the, the comments would not see the light of day because we just come out of executive session and then vote. Um, so I think um, <clears throat> for the purposes of transparency, uh, we should have this discussion in open session as opposed to executive session. Yeah, could I just see thumbs up if people agree? And yeah, seems like majority has the thumbs up, great. So. So what, what I'm gonna ask is maybe Nick, you would be more indicated. Do you, do you mind just summarizing the memo of understanding so that the members of the public 
can 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 hear that too, considering that we just have a couple. Because I was not able to put this out sooner. Do you mind? Yeah, that's fine. So um, this is basically, a, you know, generally an agreement by which the school board would agree to convey the property uh, roughly 3.8 acres um, on the edge of, the, of undeveloped land on the Berlin Elementary School property to the town. Um, and so the memorandum is written in a way that uh, there's a bunch of whereas statements at the beginning. And these basically say that the school has this property the town uh, needs the property for purposes of the new, new town center, and that the school would be open to conveying the property to the town for purposes of using it for the new town center. And so one of the ideas there is that it's, a, it's, a, it's for a specific use. Um, the other piece that we put in here uh, that's newer from the last time I met with you all back, I think in September, is that um, if the board approves this today and signs off on this memorandum of understanding, it would still have to go to the electorate of the unified union for a vote. And so, yeah, it still has to pass that public vote threshold um, in order for all of this to move forward. Um, so if you all sign off on this, if you authorize to sign off on it today, then you, you would be committing to conveying that property to the town, um, subject to an affirmative vote of the electorate, which would be, um, go on to the warning for the upcoming town meeting, the up upcoming board meeting. Uh, and, um, and in here we have in this agreement, um, we put in some conditions and we have general language in here that would be more specific once the actual deed is drafted. Um, there also would have to be some survey and site work done in order to kind of um, get the specifics on this. But generally the idea uh, that there's a few restrictions that the property would be used for the new town center there would be some kind of landscaping buffer between the existing school and the new town center. Um, the district could continue using hiking trails uh, on the property. And if these conditions aren't met um, within, within a certain period of time, the property would come back to the school. Um, and it's, it's not indefinite. Right now we have in here 15 years. So if the, it restricts the use of the property for 15 years, um, beyond that, the town would have more flexibility regarding the property. Thank you, Nick. And you know, all, all of these conditions came from our past meeting, the, the hearing that we had. So we would try to incorporate the feedback that we received from the board and, and the town. Any questions? Oh, Maggie? I was just curious where the 15 year period came from. I don't recall us discussing that previously. So more info would be wonderful. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. that a uh, good question. I, you know, in, in the initial discussion, um, I had proposed a permanent indefinite restriction and um, anyone who's receiving land will, will balk at that to some extent. And so I think from the town's perspective, from what I understood, you know, in a certain, you know, at some point in the future, they may want to use this differently, whether it's 15 years or a different period of time. Um, who knows? The 15 years is just kind of loosely associated with a potential bonding period for the town to uh, get a bond on the new town center project. It could be a different term. And you know, if the school board wanted to propose um, an alternative number, uh, we could certainly modify um, 
the memorandum of understanding and you know authorize it along a, a different with a different number and send that back to the town. Uh, sorry, but I would I would just add that I don't think it's unreasonable to have a time frame on there. You know, at some point in at you know in 30, 50 years, whatever it is, um, it's not unreasonable to to think that you know the town might want to do something differently. And Nick, just to follow up on that, you you coordinated that with the lawyer for the town of Berlin, so that the fifteen years they have seen that, right? Fifteen years they've they've generally agreed to, from what I understand. If we were to come back with a different number, I don't know how that would be received. Thank you, Diane, and then Chris, you're on deck. Um, so just to clarify, so say we approve it, it still has to go to the voters. And if the voters vote it down, then it's no longer approved, correct? So then that really messes up the February 1 deadline, correct? We were being told repeatedly at that meeting that they needed to know by February 1st. And so doesn't this then push it back? to when the um, communities can vote. I don't, I, I don't know exactly what the February 1 deadline is. I did not speak about that with the town. I don't know if this would give them sufficient reassurance that um, for them to move forward. I guess that's, that's more a question for the town. But from, from my discussions with the town, um, they agreed that this should go to the public vote before the property could be conveyed. Chris? Okay, so is, it, is there anyone from the town here? Because I think Diane is, is right that we were, there were representations up and down um, that this had to be done at this meeting because they had to have something done by February 1st. And if that's not accurate, uh, then I'd like to hear why it it's not accurate. Uh, and now I'm gonna comment on this document as a whole. Um, the uh, section 4D, uh, which is the 15 year period uh, Nick was talking about, to me is problematic um, because it is, you know, Nick in his, his um, summary, uh, said that after 15 years, if the town did any of these things, the land would come back to uh, the um, school. But that's not accurate uh, because it's the school would have an option to buy the land back to the cost of the improvements. And I don't think we should be agreeing to anything about buying it back. That if the town, the whole purpose of this discussion was to provide uh, the school property to the town of Berlin so they could complete their town center project in that that is the sole purpose for this land conveyance. Uh, it is not to have a 15 year period so that the town, if after 15 years they've done some building and say, we'll sell it back to you for the improvements, which are now $2 million, because that essentially becomes a non-starter because the school is not gonna buy back the land, I suspect, for $2 million. And if basically this 15 year period, essentially um, after 15 years, the town does have the obligation to say, this is what we're doing, um, although the language is odd because it says if the town builds or enters or uses, those are all active verbs as opposed to proposes to build or proposes to use or uh, proposes to enter into an agreement. Uh, then the town has the first, the school has the right of first refusal. Um, this, this, I cannot agree to the section. I won't support the section. Um, you know, my understanding is that we were going to convey this land, they could use it for the municipal purposes for the town center, and if they stopped using it at any time, not 15 years, not 20 years, not 30 years, at any time, it would revert back to the school. And that's the deal I think we should go with, not, not this. This is, this becomes a giveaway um, to me, uh, and not, a, not 
we would not be doing our duties as stewards of our land and our assets for the school district, I think, if we agreed to this. So I have a lot, I just have problems with this because it's, it's, con, it's significantly different than what we talked about, I think, at, at the Berlin meeting um, in terms of any reversionary interest that we would have, that we would retain. Uh, the other thing on section C, um, I'm a little uncomfortable with the language that says that uh, WCUUSD to maintain and as opposed to saying the um, WCUSSD retains the right to use the property for um, hiking trails and maintaining them and for the general public to do the same because allowing is different than asserting your own right to use that property, um, which, which is what our understanding was as well. Uh, and then one minor thing is that there's, on, uh, there's a difference between the $10 purchase and the $1 purchase, but that's extraordinarily minor, but that's just an inconsistency which should be cleared up. But I am, I am fully against D as it's written now, because I don't think that was what um, our hope was. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Chris, and yeah, and 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 D is a you know the whole thing is a draft. So and then just to be clear, Nick got this back today, like at two o'clock or three o'clock back from the town. So so it's this is just a draft. So we can we can go we can go back to them with with the changes. Let me see, Chris and that Maggie. Is that an old hand or a new hand? Are you there, Maggie? Other way, Diane, go ahead and we'll, oh, there she is. She unmuted. Maggie? Sorry, I thought I would express that just by leaving it up. Yes, it's a new hand, thank you. Yeah, go ahead. I was um, looking for information about how, if that 15 year period is reached, that would be revisited. What mechanism would that be communicated that that would be an opportunity to revisit this? Nick, sorry. Yeah, um, the way that this is written now, there wouldn't be an opportunity to revisit after the 15 years. The, the board would not retain any authority to, um, you know, do anything beyond what's expressly set out there. Um, and if I can just briefly speak to Chris's comments, um, the the idea of the automatic reversion i i did uh send that to the town in my initial draft to them and this is e effectively um you know their counter offer um and I, I i think as floor said you know this document is subject to revision or you know changes to what would be um what would be acceptable to the board. I, I, my, my impression from the town is that they were balking at a permanent um, restriction. Now, I think what we could do is, um, and I did kind of touch on this with the town a little bit in our discussions, in 4C, what that could look like is a permanent um, easement to use the trails. And then, um, you know, that, that I think makes it a little bit more firm. Uh, there could be potentially in 4B, the landscape buffer area is in the form of some kind of permanent easement as well. Um, I think the town, my sense, and I, again, I can't speak for the town, but my sense is that you know, if the town were to build improvements on the property and then it reverted back to the school, um, they would want some, you know, compensation, you know, for the value of those improvements. There's a similar provision in, in, the, in the unified districts articles regarding um, 
you know, Im improvements and transfer back to a town. But again, you know, if the board uh, wanted to just have a simple um, clause that says this property can only ever be used for the new town center, and if it ever ceases to be to be used for that, then it automatically reverts uh, back to the school district. That is, you know, that is legally possible to write a provision like that into uh, the deed, and we could modify this MOU to um, to indicate that we want that type of specific language and that's what the board is authorizing but you know I think again I think you know it's a, it, this is a question for the board to to figure out is there a, a longer time limit and then the Ber the town is free to use the property for something different or is this a perpetual um, restriction on the property thank you Nick if Diane. Uh, so I just I just want to say that what I've been asking for months now is whether or not this would go before um, community members. So I really appreciate that there is this clause in it. And, um, you know, I'm still debating and listening to people in terms of whether or not I will vote for it. But if I do vote for this MOU, it is because it will go before the greater community to really weigh in on this. Thank you, Diane. Uh, Chris, I'm gonna let Michaelin go first because you're ready. <laughs> Ask one question. Go ahead. Go. Um, <clears throat> well, I also agree with what Diane says. I'm, I'm, I feel some weight off of us knowing that it's gonna go to the voters as a whole. Um, but I also have concerns. I have concerns about the 15 years. I think that seems short. I'm not necessarily opposed to there being a time limit, but I'd, I'd be more apt to go out like a generation or, or two. Um, and then I like the idea of it reverting within that whatever time frame was agreed upon, reverting back to us without having to necessarily pay whatever improvements have been made. Um, so that would be my vote. I'm not opposed to a time frame. I would vote, I would like it to be longer though. Um, and my preference would be to not have to pay back the cost of the improvements. Thank you. Chris? Um, so just to clarify, the, the way this provision seems to be written, and Nick, please correct me if this is incorrect. What I'm going to say is that the 15 year time limit is basically, um, you know, it's it's arbitrary. It's, it's you know, like Nick said, it's probably mir uh, mirrors something to do with the bonding a time, but it's arbitrary. There's nothing that requires 15 years or any time. I mean, we could, and I think we should, um, have a reversionary interest uh, whenever this land is not going to be used for mun municipal purposes. Because without that, after 15, at least this number, 15 years, it could be 25 years, it could be 30 years. Um, once those restrictions go away, uh, the restriction in terms of the use, uh, then the, they could they could build a the town could build whatever they want on that land because there's nothing that holds them back having the reversionary interest um, once the land is not being used for a municipal purpose which is what they asked for they asked us to do it for a municipal purpose not in a, and like we heard everyone saying we'll never use it for anything else that's not our intention if that's not your intention then let's memorialize that in the language because the language here, is very important. Um, it has legal effect. And if we don't get it right, um, then we may just regret it down the line. Um, furthermore, um, the not having a being required to pay anything if the land reverts, it's basically a, a safety clause for us because the town um, will have in, you know, spent money to improve it, which is what we want them to do. That's the purpose of the conveyance. But we don't want them then to be able to take the land and use it for other purposes unless we buy it back from them. We want them to just use it for the municipal purposes that they've asked for. And if they don't, then it reverts back 
regardless of whether they made improvements on it. Um, by not having to buy, you know, essentially, if we have to buy, pay for the improvements, it's a negative because we're not going to, I suspect we're not going to do that. We won't have the extra money to do that. So, you know, if we're by having the reversionary interest without any buyback provision required of us, you know, it holds the town to its commitment, which is what I think they made. Uh, and so the language here is important and we should, we should get it right before it goes to the voters. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Chris. Hey, I'm gonna let Carrie ask a question. I believe Carla is here from this, from the town. Go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Um, I've got two questions. One about this this particular topic, which which is, is there a way that we could say potentially extend the timeline, but also if the town is going to do wants to do something different with it, give the district essentially a veto power um, before that um, decision is made. And I, and I don't need an answer to that. I'm just throwing it out there. But I guess my bigger point is. Um, it sounds like we clearly need to do another revision to this draft, um, and I feel like we're getting bogged down in the detail of this one particular provision. I wonder if we should just acknowledge that we need more work on this and identify any other issues that we want Nick to work with, say, Floor and Chris on, and before they bring it back to us. Thank you, Perry. Yeah, I think it's clear. Uh, Michaelian, is that a new hand? Okay, go ahead and then I'll- Yeah, sorry. I also wanted to point out before that it seemed to me in the meeting that we had with the town that, um, you know, that it's pretty important to their project that they have use of this land. So I don't, I mean, I think we should ask for the deal we want. I don't, I don't think we should feel like they're not going to accept it. Um, you know, I, I think we should come up with something we're all comfortable with um, and not feel bullied into something else. Thank you. Thank you. have more hands up. I'm gonna, it, Maggie, do you have another question? Otherwise I wanna give the Berlin town a, the opportunity. Go ahead, Maggie. I, I, I would love it if this could be answered by the town. My understanding was that this was essential for the purposes of rerouting the entry into the complex, not for development of the land itself that it, it's it's necessary as part of their their buffer with the road. So clarification on that would also be helpful. Thank you. Thanks, Maggie. Jonathan. Yeah, thanks, Floor. Um, I just want to be clear again about where I stand, and that is that um, there is no MOU or you know a document that transfers district property to the town um, that I would support. And I'll give a few reasons why. The main one is I don't see what interest it serves the school district to give the town property. Effectively, we're doing it to help the town. And that's nice and that's great, but that's serving their interests more than it's serving the district interests. So that's one reason. Another reason is is because I feel like during the select board meeting last uh, few weeks ago, we heard from Carla and others, many, many different entities that they had been contacted, in contact with about this project, trying to get the grant approvals and all these different permitting requirements. Understood that it's a lot of work. That's part of the deal. But I really still feel like we were last to the table and it's our property effectively. Uh, and so we should have been first to the table. So I have serious concerns about that. Uh, and there are environmental reasons, other reasons. So once again, I will just be clear that I will not support any transfer of any of that property to the town. Uh, I, I have other reasons, but I think those two are sufficient ecological reasons but those are sufficient for me. I, I don't feel that this was done, frankly, in good faith by the town because we were last to the table. 
that's seriously for me very very problematic thank you thank you jonathan uh, jonas and then for real you can get to go carla yeah. uh so i, I jonathan I, I respect everything that you said the timeline for our involvement in this goes back i think at least a year it was first brought to this board i understand that uh, the previous the berlin board the legacy berlin board looked at this um, until you know the merger sort of put that on hold um, so jonathan i do share some of your concern there but i you know we did discuss this back in september right and it's taken some time to do that um, i do see a benefit to the school you know we've heard from the school principal um, and we heard from the hospital right and we heard from uh, the housing advocates those are some powerful human interests uh that are that have signed on to this um i also share uh, jonathan's con environmental concern um i'm not sure what the law is and maybe chris or someone else can it can uh educate us about who would you know if there was you know a problem in the wetland right that's at the, the bottom of that little valley you know who is responsible for mitigating that you know even if it's on our property if something happens on that piece of land after it's transferred and there needs to be some kind of mitigation, who's responsible for that? Um, I will support this with a longer period of reversion rights. 15 years really does not seem all that long. This is supposed to be a permanent project, right? There's a lot of work being done on this. And, and again, you know, Jonathan, hearing everything you say and having heard, you know, from Vera and you know the other folks from Berlin, uh, including, um, I forget the gentleman's name who spoke earlier, you know, there is some opposition to this, but again, Berlin has spent the time and money and taken their votes to make this happen. I think the, um, uh, the decision to grant them a new, you know, the new town center designation was an enormous achievement, right? That's not easy to do. I think, per, you know, and having listened into some of that board's deliberations about it, um, you know, this is not, you know, the kind of project that they wanted to support. I don't think this is the kind of project they had in mind uh, when they created those designations, but Berlin got it done. I think that that is um, admirable. But again, at the end of the day, it's not about the project, right? It's about the use of the land, um, you know, for municipal purposes and making sure that, that if we do this, then our interests are covered. I think 15 years is way too short. I would, I'm with Chris. I would like to see this into perpetuity. If that's not okay, you know, if the town box at that, you know, then we need to make it really, really long, right? Like, like Hong Kong or, the, you know, the, the Panama Canal, 15 years, right, is a, is a blink of an eye. And it concerns me that that's the year that the town wanted to put in there because it seems like the plans are not as permanent as we thought. Um, and that after 15 years, they would think about doing something else with that. I, it makes me very uncomfortable. So I would like to see that change to, you know, uh, again, you know, the number is random, 50, 100, longer. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. I just want to just say something quickly. I just want to make sure that we don't turn this into a hearing. So I'm going to open it up to Berlin, even though they're not board members and not going to wait until we go into public comment. But, but basically, uh, the, the decision is, is the school board going to need this property later on? Granted, all of that we have said, 25 years, perpetuity, you know, we need to change. But it's, it's, let's just try to keep it in the decision that we have to make as a, as a school. Are we going to use this property in the future is what, what we're looking at. And can we convey this 3.8 acres to the town of, uh, of Berlin? It's is is the main is is the main question, okay? Uh, Carla and then Thomas, and just please be brief. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to to say that um, the process of this drafting was done with the two lawyers, with not a, 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 in in their sort of interest. I was peripherally involved, and I was just um, I did make the comment that. I was uncomfortable with the, this per, in perpetuity on a deed restriction just because that is extremely limiting for forever. And but the term limit was the 15 years was something that the lawyer, I think, decided that was not the, the town. We are not trying to limit it to that that 15 years, I don't think. So I just want to make that clear, at least not from my perspective. 
Um, we do intend to use it for municipal purposes and there is no al alternative plans um, in, behind the scenes. Um, so I think I think that's important. I just I, I had mentioned to um, to Vince to look at the the option agreement with just because it did have a you know like a purchase of a, a, an amount to buy back and and those types of things and that's where I think that came from. But uh, you know the town is is not wed to those terms and and I think a lot of the the actual language came from the lawyer. So I, I just want to make that clear and I think Tom wants to speak. Thank you, Carla. Tom. Thank you for having me. I just had some clarity. Uh, uh, I started speaking to to Brian, your former superintendent, in in August of 2020. And so this 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 process with this uh, with the supervisor union has been going on for a long time. And, and during that time, the town of Berlin was was upgrading its municipal wastewater system. And on on this full property, you had a, a an old wastewater pump station that actually pumped your wastewater across those wetlands onto the Berlin Mall property. The town of Berlin, in good faith, working with the school at, at an expense of about $250,000, replaced your pump station on that school um, with, with, you know, maybe it was my naivete, I was working with Brian in good faith to the end of uh, to this to this project. So, the, the town and the school have been working cooperatively on this for quite quite some time, and I would suggest you speak to Bill Ford, your your um, your capital improvement uh, uh, person. He will gladly uh, back up everything I'm I'm saying to you. Uh, the 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 issue with the timing, Fox Run is the uh, thirty unit of workforce housing that's looking to to develop they have to close on their property in early February. A, a condition of their closure, of their getting their funding, is that this road relocation comes to fruition. That is the, that's the February date that you're, be, you're hearing. The town of Berlin, and I don't think the school wants to lose 30 units of workforce housing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. So, if I'm listening correctly to the to the town, before I open it up back to the back to the board, they they will be willing to look at at 4D in the in there. So, perpet sounds like perpetuity is what the board is looking for. And would it be 25 years to perpetuity? Does that sound reasonable? Or it just means forever. Perpetuity is forever. I, I know. So I'm just trying to give options. Uh, Nick, I should let the. Um, what I guess the way that we had written it now is that the use would be limited to the new town center. And so I think what you could do is say it has to be used for the new town center for X amount of time, and that could be a number of years or it could be forever. Or you could say um, it has to be used for the new town center for whatever, 50 years. And then after that, it must continue to be used for municipal purposes forever. And that gives the town some flexibility, but still restrains it to uh, municipal purposes. And I'm just kind of trying to put some ideas out there. I, I, I'm not necessarily advocating uh, one or the other, but that's just another thought. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Nick. Does that sound reasonable to the board members? I'm, I'm just trying to get a hold of the time too, because we have a pretty long board meeting and I don't want to spend the entire meeting on the, and I see thumbs up. So, okay, great. Uh, Diane and Chris. So just two two quick questions. One is, are, so if this has to be voted on by the electorate, then we're not able to, so is the MOU enough then for the town to be able to say, yes, we've passed that February date? And then two, I, I mean, I don't know what I'm voting on in terms of the MOU because there's been so many changes to it. So I don't know. I hesitate to vote for an MOU that I have no idea what it's going to say. 
so just to uh, respond to that quickly, just because of the time frame we we have, I usually try to not do this and let the the process flow, just in you guys talking. But we need to get a hold of this. So the twenty uh, in the only change that we are that we're looking at is is is, is in perpetuity for for D, right? And I think sorry, and I think the. Um... And on the B, property would automatically revert back, and the and the school board would not pay for improvements. Yeah, and then B is the permanent easement. So those are the the you know basically the three things that I I, I heard from the from the board. Chris, go ahead. Yeah. So if 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 perpetuity is where we are, um, then it seems to me that. Um, one, two, and three would go away um, because those are things that you know that just wouldn't happen, or wouldn't they, the town wouldn't have the option because the, those um, those specific um, one, two, and three are basically piggyback on a time frame that would expire. Um, but, but if it's perpetuity, I don't think this these happen. Unless I'm reading it wrong, uh, Chris, one is the presenter article to the unified electorate, right? No, 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 no. I think he's I'm talking about D, the numbers in D. D, 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 D one, two, oh, and three. Oh, the A, oh, oh, yeah. D, A, right. B, C, D. Sorry, you right, got Right, right, right. I'm okay, sorry about that. Sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. Okay. Is that, is that wrong, Nick, or does the perpetuity, like, if we extend that, you know, we're basically conveying the land for use uh, for the municipal purpose of the new town center. And if that doesn't happen, if it, the land is not any longer used for that purpose, then we get a reversion. That's pretty simple. Um, these other parts, I don't know if they are consistent with a perpetuity, uh, notion of perpetuity. So uh, Nick, go ahead. Um, you can still have, you can still have additional provisions that there's a, for example, for example, a permanent uh, easement for the school district to use the hiking trails, a uh, permanent requirement that they keep a landscape buffer. And so I think those, those are, it, it sounds like those are the three things, a permanent landscape buffer, permanent use of the trails, um, and they have to use it only for the new town center forever. And if they stop, uh, the property automatically reverts back to the school district. Right, so my question, Nick, is does that, I mean, those are pretty clearly and, and plainly stated. Does that then take away the need for number one, number two, and number three in subsection D? I, I see where you're looking now. Yeah, yeah, sorry, um, you got us confused. Yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes, I think that yes, that's right. And I think we might even be able to get rid of subsection D altogether and, you know, attach the reversion to subsection A. Um, and then we can potentially change B and C so that those are in the form of easements. Thanks, Nick. Hey, Jill. Um, thanks, Flor. Sorry to prolong this. I just want to make sure that we're not uh, that if we do the perpetuity language, uh, does that place us at any risk at some point? Like, what if there's a big, you know, like, do, what if we don't want it back? <laughs> and and they and the, and the and there's a reason that the town would like to unload it. And they and so they change the use and now it's ours again and it becomes a, an albatross. I'm just curious if that like it's hard to decide what we want forever. So we we would retain that dollar option, right? I don't think anyone has said they want it automatically reverted. I think we okay, so we have an option. We have the option. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I was just getting confused. Okay, so. 
So I guess for tonight's purpose, uh, uh, I think what if, if we could uh, agree to maybe let us do the, the changes and authorize Chris and myself to look at them with that satisfy the board like Gary had suggested. Okay, so do you wanna uh, do you wanna amend your motion, <laughs> uh, Scott, a little bit? You're muted, you're muted. Sorry, thanks. Sure, I'd be happy to. So I move to approve the memorandum of understanding dated January 19, 2022 as amended by the chair and the board's attorney regarding conveying a portion of the Berlin Elementary School property to the town of Berlin and to authorize the chair of the board to sign that MOU on behalf of the board. Thank you. And I, I will connect with you, Chris. Don't, don't worry about it. Uh, I will so second I, Scott's amended motion. Thank you. That was the next question. So you accept the amendment. OK. All those in favor of the motion as read, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. OK. All right. And then could we could we do the next motion, uh, Jonas or Scott or whoever has it in front of them, uh, just for the article? I have it in front of me. Please go um, ahead. Okay. Um, I move that the board present the following article to voters at our annual meeting. Quote, shall the WCUUSD convey approximately 3.8 acres of undeveloped land that is now part of the Berlin Elementary School property to the town of Berlin for use as part of the new town center, question mark, unquote. Thank you. Can I have a second to that? Second. second. Thank you, Ursula. First minute. Any questions on that or any comments on that? Uh, oh, I have Jonathan. It will. I, I let Nick go first because I think there might be something we need to modify. Sorry, Jonathan. Go ahead. Nick. Sorry, I. As I was coming into this meeting, I was looking at the agenda and I, I looked at the rest of the warning, um, and I I would suggest just to make it consistent with the other articles in the warning. Um, if I can give new language for a, a possible motion, shall the school district authorize the board of directors to convey approximately 3.8 acres of undeveloped land that is now part of the Berlin Elementary School property to the town of Berlin for use as part of the new town center. And again, that's just to be consistent with the other articles. I accept the friendly amendment. Thank you, Nick, and thank you, Scott. Ursula, you accept the amendment? Yes. Okay. Uh, questions, Jonathan, go ahead. Yeah, I, I was just, my suggestion would be that that article be more specific saying, should in effect, should the, the town of Berlin convey this property uh, for the sole purpose of, uh, development of a, of, a, of a municipal uh, building, something that is more specific to that purpose and, and not as, as vague as it is right now. Because it should be clear to the town, the, the, the people in the district more broadly, exactly the purpose for which this conveyance is happening, which is to develop otherwise public property in the town of Berlin, i.e. a municipal building. Thank you, Jonathan. And, and that would be clear in the memo of understanding, uh, right, Nick? So how do we link those, those two? 
Well, the memorandum, the, the motion now does uh, mirror the memorandum of understanding, which limits the use of the property to as part of the new town center. Um, and so it's not specific. It doesn't specify that there's going to be a, a municipal building and a road. Um, but I think that the the town is restricted by the new town center process to the plan that they have now, but um, this leaves them a, a little bit of flexibility if that plan gets moved around a little bit. Um, so I, th that's why it wasn't it wasn't that specific. And I don't know if there's any um, additional information materials that are presented to voters to kind of explain this article. Maybe that could it could be addressed in that way. Thank you, Nick. Uh, Ursula, oh, uh, Chris, is that a new hand? No, it's not. Okay, Sorry. So Urs Ursula, go ahead, please. So my question was whether or not a copy of the memorandum of understanding would be included in the information that's going to go out to voters so that they have some information there. Yes, I guess we we would you know we are gonna vote to send all everything mail in ballot, <laughs> so so we um, I guess there would be we would leave some stuff to the town to do. Uh, oh, Rosie, go ahead because you are that's why you're here today. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rosie LeCare, and I'm the Washington Central Supervisory. Well, excuse me, I'm I'm your school clerk, um, so. Um, this is very interesting for me to hear about, and um, I guess what I would say is that any information that you want to have people um, to have in their hands prior to going to vote at your annual meeting, which is also town meeting, um, I would suggest that that be included in the school report that is generated every year. Um, that's a very tight time frame, but it is still doable. I don't know if that helps answer the question or not. It helped me understand. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that is a that is a good idea, Rosie. So let's go ahead and vote. It, oh, Chris is now. Yeah, I, would, I just want to confirm that we are going to get the memorandum of understanding out to the voters so that they know what they are voting. In, with the specifics, because I think that would be helpful. Uh, and, and we can also post it on the website. Yeah. In addition to sending out a paper copy. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's go ahead and vote. Oh, Diane. I just have a quick clarification. Is this a floor vote or, a, or an Australian ballot that it will be on? It would be an Australian ballot, right, Nick? Is it Because that's how we vote. There's no right. question on that. It's, it, right, it, yes. Rosie, Nick, professional. Yes. Okay. All right. So, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Seeing none, I, the motion carries. Okay. That was, thank you, Nick, for, for coming. It, Thanks, Nick. No, but please go ahead and make some changes and we'll talk tomorrow, right? right? Thank you for having me. Thank you. Floor, if I could, I also want to say thanks to the folks who did come from the town of Berlin. Um, Carla, the note about the timeline, the 15 years in there was well received. Thanks for that information. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Carla yeah. and Tom. All right. Uh, let's move quickly. Uh, Kari, do you have a suggestion to make a miracle tonight? Your hand is up. No, I, uh, I'll take it down. I, I'm, I'm going to take it back. OK. All right. Uh, vote to mail in the annual ballots to all regular voters in the district. Uh, all our towns have approved this. So Jonas? Yep. Uh, I move uh, that the district mail the annual meeting ballot to all active registered voters in the district. Thank you. Could I have a second for that? I'll second it. Uh, Lindy? 
Uh, and Rosie has her hand up. Yeah, I see it. it, it Rosie? Since the motion has been seconded, I'd like to um, request yeah. that this actually say it would be sent to all active, not challenged voters. The reason that I asked for that is because active voters, every town has a number of active voters, but some of them have been challenged, which means they no longer live in the, live in the area. Uh, we can't take them off the voter checklist yet, but we have good reason to have them challenged and not be here. So rather than active registered voters, I would request respectfully active, not challenged voters. Thank you. Um, Rosie, thank you for that. As the person that made the motion, um, I would be very hesitant to accept that. I think if someone is, is still on the voter roll, um, you know, as an active voter, then we should send them a ballot. If your challenge process is not complete, I understand that. Um, but in the interest of participatory democracy and making sure that everyone, you know, e you know, everyone who should get a ballot uh, gets a ballot, even if some who should not get a ballot uh, don't get a ballot, I would prefer. I would. I'm. I. I I'll. I'd hear from the rest of the board, but I'm. I'm not favorable to that. That's not how East Montpelier's board voted. That's how East Mont that's how the board East Montpelier voted for active non uh, not challenged voters. No, it, they, I'm using the language, Rosie, from the memo that we sent together. So and and is the language from what is on on statute? On on number two on statute, it says to I I, I include it so they could uh, active registered voters in the district. That's what okay. it says. So Procedurally, I think what's going to end up happening then is your town clerks are going to be flooded with mail that comes back that ha that you can't do anything with. They're just ballots that can't even be considered defective because you can't open them. They can't, they're not deliverable. That's the only reason for the request. But if you want to do it the other way, that's how you want to vote to do it. That's up to you. I believe that the motion uh, conforms to statute. Um, and if some ballots come back, you know, without having been opened or without having been delivered, I think that that is something that, that that's something I'm comfortable with. I understand it may make more work for town clerks, you know, and apologies for that in advance. Um, but I think we're going by, we're, we're going to go by, I, I prefer to go by right. statute and I'd rather mail out more ballots than fewer. Okay. Thank you. Just, re, just know that challenged voters have every opportunity to vote at the polls. They come to the polls. All they have to do is, is get their ballots there. And, and, and if they're challenged and their votes are legally deemed not, you know, votable, then that's something that happens. Right. I, I understand that. I'm not sure you mean unvotable. Well, or uncountable. Uncountable. A non-valid non ballot. Right. If, if that happens, if it's, then if that it's happens. issued and returned, it's just not a ballot. It's just a wash. Yeah. So let's let's go ahead and, and vote. Uh, sorry okay. to make this shorter. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Um, I'll call it, Rosie, thank you for being here and helping yeah. uh, with the clarity of the, and, and again, I echo um, Jonas's um, apologies in advance for any extra burden that may be on the clerks, but, you know, just until they're stricken from the, the uh, registration, they should get about, I, I agree with him on that. Thank I you. I don't have any <laughs> problem with that either. I'm all for voter access. Yeah. Thank you for your service though. Thank you, Rosie. And you're not done because we still have one more. Okay. <laughs> Don't go away. Uh, so 3.3 uh, community uh, forum debrief and plan for February. I am, I am looking at the time and I know that this is incredibly important. Uh, but I think we're going to cover some of that in, in our next Oops, in our next steps to report it to the town. So if the board would allow us to just table that item right now and move into the next one. It, Jen, is that okay with you? I just feel we're gonna cover it. Okay. All right. 
so I'm just trying to make up a little time. A annual, a, the annual run and draft, we moved it. A school board goals, they are in page seven. A, there's two goals there a, looking for action. They have long-term planning for the finance committee and the, and the goal for the quality committee I'm looking for a motion. I'll move that we adopt the two goals as stated in the packet. Thank you. Can I have a second? Second. I'll second it. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm gonna give it to Lindy. <laughs> so we have discussed them. Oh, Scott, you have your hand up. Thanks, Fuller. Um, yeah, I, I was just gonna make a subsidiary motion to postpone consideration of this item to the first regular board meeting in April, um, simply because I, I think that uh, nothing will happen, nothing bad will happen in the world if these two goals are not approved on this occasion. And there will be a new board voted in in March and this will give the new board an opportunity to, um, to consider what it's there for and what it's aiming for. And uh, rather than have, you know, I don't want to call us a lame duck board since so many of us will be continuing, but I think it would be a very um, helpful thing for, for um, new board members to participate. And I'm sorry, I, I didn't wait for a second before launching into that spiel. Oh, no, we, we had a second. Uh, so, but I, I just wanna say something like we have been doing work on this already. It, so like Chris O'Brien, you can speak to this, but there's already work being, being done both by the quality committee and for the long-term for the facilities. So I think the uh, approving the goals uh, today is just, it, it had a little bit of a timeline is something that we're looking forward to getting done in in June and is work that the board has been doing right now so it doesn't mean that we the new board can uh, come come in and it, it, the goal is never done right it's like a circular process in in my way like the design in my mind you know like you're always going to revisit but but at least let's do what we intended to do Chris uh, I would support that we vote on the goals tonight um, because it creates continuity from one board to another. Having a new board doesn't mean, oh, you put on the brakes and you continue with the process that you have in, in, in place. And, and continuity uh, is helpful for identity purposes. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Are you guys okay to vote? Any other questions? All those in favor of adopting the goals, please say aye. Bye. 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 Thank you. Uh, school board self-evaluation is on page 13. Uh, Kari, I'm going to let you speak to it. Send a memo. Yeah, uh, just really quickly. Um, it's a good thing. It's a healthy thing to do a year-end reflection. And um, it's recommended that boards, uh, you know, we want to keep improving, reflect on what they, how they performed over the past year, and then use the results for goal setting in the next year. So um, we took a look at the um, School Board Association self-evaluation tool. thought it was a bit long for our, our purposes this year. So we're essentially proposing that we would use half of it, three, three of the categories, and then potentially incorporate the others um, next year. So... That's it. If, if you approve it, we would we would send it out um, later this week, probably give you a couple of weeks to fill it out and have the results compiled for the uh, February meeting to be the last one with this particular board. I mute it. Thank you, Kari. Uh, Lindy, your hand is up. Yes, I. My question was in here. We have a like a paper copy, I assume it'll be an electronic copy? Correct, it's already loaded into some online survey platform. I survey monkey, yeah. Okay, 
Any any other questions? I, I believe we need a motion for this. It's more like you're okay. We'll send it out. I think that's fine. All right. Okay. Thank you, Gary, for doing this. Uh, staff appreciation, uh, Diane. Just we wanted to have this place marker for us to stop and just think of why we are here, which is for our kids and our teachers and our staff that make our schools run, especially during this hard time. If anyone wanted to make any remarks, um, I will be reaching out to the subcommittee that the staff appreciation subcommittee with a couple of ideas to run by them before we run by the board of ways for us to show uh, ongoing appreciation for our staff. Thank you, Diane. 3.8 is an update in the Career Center and it is an update, but also a request for, for the board. And I'll just explain it really quickly. When we uh, approved the warning at our last our last meeting, since then there has been a little change that Harwood District uh, asked for it. And basically is on article number two, it's just, it's, it doesn't change the intent in any way, but in article number two, it just it listed um, Montpelier Roxbury. It didn't call us by district. So the change on the language in article number two that they are requesting is that it reads Washington Central Unified Union School District, Montpelier Roxbury District. So if you guys are okay with that, I would need a motion to update article number two. And Rosie is, is here, but Jody needed, she couldn't be with us tonight because there's other board voting tonight. But we need, we just want to have a uniform <laughs> uh, warning for the six districts. Are you guys okay with that? Jonas? Do you, you want me to move? Yeah, so I would move that Article 2 of the current warning uh, make the following replacements. Um, replace uh, uh, replace BUUSD with Barry Unified Union School District. Uh, replace Harwood with Harwood Unified Union School District replace Washington Central with Washington Central Unified Union School District and replace Montpelier-Roxbury with Montpelier-Roxbury Public Schools. Thank you. Lisa, you have that, right? All right. I'll, I'll second it. Okay, let's see. Jonas and Lindy, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 <laughs> Any opposed? The motion carries. Uh, contribution to the Coalition of Vermont Student and Equity. So we, this is the placeholder that we have left to uh, give some money to the to the coalition. Scott, yeah, go ahead. May I move that the board approve a contribution of five thousand dollars out of fund balance? to the Coalition of Vermont for Vermont Student Equity. Second. <clears throat> so, sorry, Scott and then Chris, uh, questions or suggestions? Thanks. Um, <laughs> uh, this is the Dorothy Naylor Memorial um, sort of contribution, not, I mean, she's fine, <laughs> but, um, she's just no longer on the board. Uh, it was, you'll recall last time, um, her, uh, her plea that the board contribute money to the continuation of this effort to, um, to equalize the system for equalizing pupils uh, in Vermont, um, which has over time, um, been out of whack and uh, caused hardship to school districts that were um, heavily populated by families with children um, who need uh, extra resources and are not getting them. So I'm, um, I'm hoping that the board will support this. Thank you. 
Any other questions or? Okay. Before my, I had my hand up. I don't know if you can see oh, it. Uh, yeah, I can't see it. Sorry, Jill. Go ahead. Um, Scott, you're proposing five thousand dollars. That's right. Yes. Yeah. That, so that seems like a lot to me. Uh, do you have a sense for what others are um, contributing? I think that is um, that's in the neighborhood of what others are are contributing. Some are contributing more, um, but this seemed like. No, reasonable. Lindy? I had kind of a similar question um, as to Jill, not the amount as much as, is the money going to lobbyists? Is that what it's for? Uh, correct, um, in part, yes. Uh, basically all the activities of the coalition, um, sometimes, uh, I don't know if they're hiring, if they're engaging other consultants to help, but um, the uh, if you've seen how they work, um, they're, it's a very lean operation and primarily volunteer, and they're only paying for uh, the professional assistance without which it's impossible to get anything done in our system. Yeah, I, I guess I'm. I, I guess I'm just gonna share. I, I, I'm okay. We when we originally joined, we joined without offering any, without offering any money, and they were okay with that. They, there's a lot of districts that are part of it that haven't contributed any money, to and and that's okay. Mark does great work. It, there is, you know, the, the BSBA is also working in, in this issue and Mark sits in our board, in our board too. So I, I am a little uncomfortable and I just personally a little uncomfortable with uh, putting money for a uh, pay for a lobbyist. It, it would be, I, I have all respect for Maggie and, and Lionel, but I would, uh, I would want that amount to be to to be to be less if the board I'm, I'm a little uncomfortable but I, I would be more comfortable with like twenty five hundred dollars or something like that it feels like a lot of a, a, a lot of money Chris um, I would point out that the VSBA is a lobbying entity as well uh, that we support uh, well more than five thousand dollars on an annual basis uh, and this is a, an issue that I think we stand behind as a board um, because we supported the goal, I think, in the springtime um, of, of moving forward with this, uh, with the legislature changing the system. So uh, $5,000 is, um, I think it's a fair contribution. Uh, and unfortunately, our system does run on uh, individuals who um, are paid to lobby legislators and spend their time at the state house, which most of us cannot do. Uh, and it just, it's an unfortunate reality of how things can be accomplished uh, in our political system. So uh, it's certainly a good cause and I hope that we, uh, we support this amount. Thanks, Chris. Uh, Jill and then Maggie. Um, so I'm a paid lobbyist. So just to be just to be clear, um, uh, full disclosure. Um, so I think the difference for me between this and the VSBA is that the VSBA is a trade association. So they do advocacy, but they also provide us with all kinds of other services that are directly related to our ability to operate. So I, I view this as a little different, um, which is why it makes me uncomfortable. It's really purely an advocacy effort. And so it just there could be others, uh, uh, so it, it does, I feel a little uncomfortable and, and 5,000 really seems like a lot. Thank you, Jill. Maggie? I wanted to just echo what Chris said and hope that there's support for this. Thank you, Maggie. Uh, Diane? Yeah, the, this has been an issue um, that I think Scott kind of said it too, the systems are changing and they're changing in a way that we can't keep up with and people keep ringing the bell and saying, wait a minute, take a look, look at what it said, look at what the legislature had said that needed to have happen, um, you know, with the weighted studies and everything. And it's, uh, you know, it's just getting kind of overrun. 
And so what I heard from Dorothy's voice last week was this is an opportunity for us to clang the bell louder and that if we're, and it's at a critical time for us to do that um, so that those who aren't able to get a voice can, can do that. And so I do feel that it's uh, compelled that this is what we need to be doing. Okay, are we ready for a vote? Any other questions? I don't see hands. So, oh, Chris, is that an old hand? Old hand, sorry, old hand. That's okay. So all those in favor of the motion as read by Scott, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? I'm gonna yeah. abstain. I'm, I'm, I'm just really uncomfortable, but I, I don't quite wanna vote no. <laughs> It's just too, it's a little complicated. Okay, yeah, and I'm also gonna, gonna abstain. Yeah, I'm gonna abstain too. Two, three. You got that, Lisa? Thank you. It reports finally getting here and we're a little behind schedule. I know people would probably need a little quick break, but let's move to the students' report because they've been patiently waiting for us. Good evening, everyone. I think Maya is here as well. Um, thank you for letting us share our report tonight. So Maya, if you're here and you want to start it off for us. Yeah, I can start. So uh, first off, we just want to say that the second semester starts tomorrow for everyone, which means that we are halfway <laughs> there. Um, we also had a four day weekend. Uh, because of Martin Luther King Jr. Day and because of the teacher in service. Um, as it is coming to the end of the semester, um, a lot of the um, art classes are displaying their work around the school. And normally around this time of year, we would have a big arts bash, which would have uh, shared pieces from the music department and shared pieces from the art departments. But unfortunately, because of COVID, um, it's mostly just the students and the staff and people who come into the school that are displaying their art. But it's all very, very beautiful and very, very impressive. Uh, last year, last year, last week, um, Change Makers class led a callback with a bunch of students about cancel culture and how it affects activism and how it affects our community. And more conversations are also to come for our students um, led by the various clubs that we have. So with it being winter and with the sports, we've had, uh, a lot of the spectators have not been able to come because of the COVID, uh, because of COVID, but we have been able to have some spectators be spectators be allowed now and have four people per player per game. So allowing um, fans to watch uh, at the games as well as watching it on the website to watch it. Um, and just a little update from me because I'm a senior. Um, I have turned in all my college applications and I have currently been accepted to college. So it's very, very exciting. So yeah, any questions for us? And yeah, that's it. There's not a lot going on right now. Chris, you're unmuted. Oh, my, uh, sorry, my Kaylin, I thought it was my for a minute, yeah. Um, I was just curious um, if any, if there was a way to view the, like the artwork online, is there a website or anything? It might be in the newsletter. Um, our um, assistant principal, Jess Wills, posts an online newsletter that should come with either the, the weekly letter from Stephen or just sent out. Um, there might be an Instagram page from the art department. Um, yeah, otherwise I'm not sure there's much more access than that, which is really, really sad. Yeah, usually. There's only a few photos posted on the newsletter, but I can speak with a few of the art teachers to see if more can be posted, seeing as no one can come because of COVID this year. So I feel like that would be important for all the students' work to be shown. Yeah, that would be great. Thanks. Thank you. Good. Uh, Diane and then Lindy. Uh, sure, it would be helpful to know from a student perspective how this is feeling. You said, you know, it's you're starting your second half of the year, almost there. Um, but how has it been this year as when we think of last year? Maya, if you want to speak to that first, I'll go after. Okay. Um, 
I <laughs> I don't know. I think everyone's just going day by day, especially with the COVID cases. Um, I know last last I keep saying last year, last week especially, everyone was getting a little freaked out because there were so many students and teachers not at school, and that was definitely worrying. Um, we didn't really know what was going to happen, like if we we're going to. I know a lot of like um, the administration is trying not to have everything online, seeing as that was so difficult. But we didn't we didn't know it was going to happen because I had like half my teachers um, for a couple of days last week were out, and we just had full subs. But I do think that all the teachers and admin are doing a really good job with keeping everything um, like on task and everyone safe. So, yeah, I can very much um, agree with everything that Maya said. Being my senior year, I'm really, really happy that I'm able to, you know, hang out with all of the seniors and be able to have those connections with my teachers with my last year there. Um, and it, it's, it's really a lot easier to learn in person and to not be on Zoom. Um, what was the other thought? It is a little bit hard with all of the cases coming up and having all the subs, but the fact that we're able to still get our work done to be able to get all the assignments done um, and most of the projects we've been What's doing. Are good. Okay. And just a quick follow up. I didn't know, Anna, if you were wanted to share which two you were accepted to. Yeah, um, of course. So I applied to eight of them. And so far, I've been um, accepted into Lesley College, which is in Cambridge, Massachusetts, um, with an undecided major um, and a partial uh, major in psychology and education. And the other one was Roger Williams, which is in Rhode Island. Um, and same thing for education. That is wonderful. Hey, Lindy? Um, the student reports just made me think about if there's any way on our websites to be more updated with photos or picture rotations that would highlight some of that so that when you go, the main page has just a little ticker thing with the pictures going around or I don't, I don't know because I just opened them to look at them and thought that would be a nice thing to have. And, but it may be the way our system is set up that it's too much work. And the last thing I'm asking somebody to do is have another thing on their plate with all that's going on right now. But the student artwork at U32 from when my kids were there, that was such a celebration and amazing work. And so great to see the work of the kids. Um, so it would be nice if it could be somewhat visible. Lindy, I'm not sure who is responsible for the website, but I can try to talk to Stephen and student services because we have updated it within the past couple of years, but it, I totally agree that Thanks. showing um, score from there would be really cool. Thank you so yes. much. And again, I can speak with the art teachers and maybe we can get a slideshow set up. Um, I know some of the teachers already have photos and we can try to share that maybe on the website or through the newsletter. Thanks. <clears throat> Jonathan, I don't think you know you're unmuted. <laughs> Is there a, yeah, there. Maggie? Um, one of you mentioned the, the question of um, going online, and I'm wondering how informed you all feel about how Vermont's um, rules around that might differ from other states. And it, you know, if, if you feel like you have adequate information to understand what the options are for our schools, because they, they really are different than what you might be seeing from peers in other states. I and I'm hearing sorry. this also oh. from my team at U32 as well. Well, you know, we're gonna go remote and the, you know, that's, that's not the reality. Yeah. I. The only things I've heard about is like while well, watching the news. And so I knew that it wasn't a possibility. Um, but I have heard a lot of my peers talk about like the fear of going online. And I just feel like it'd be important for maybe in the newsletter or something just to like get everything straight on the possibilities of what could happen. Because I know there's a bunch of confusion, especially last week with 
what would happen to school if COVID cases kept spiking. Yeah, I, I can very much agree with that. We have heard that we're not going to go online because of the um, state and the governor stating that we are going to be in school all the time. However, when there are too many staff members um, unavailable to sub, to teach, we do lose a day of school. So that really that, that um, impacts our learning a little bit. We didn't have school a couple, I mean, I think it was last week or the day, the week before that. And that impacted my learning as a senior and impacted a bunch of the other students learning because we're missing those days in the classroom. And we, I'm not sure if we're making them up or how that totally goes. So I think we understand to a certain extent that we will be in school or we will not have school, but we don't know how that will um, affect the end of the year and just overall um, what would happen. Thank you both. Thanks for the thorough thought and report. And on that note, let's move into the superintendent COVID-19 update. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to say a few things unrelated to COVID actually that uh, build exactly on what Anna and Maya just said. So that should help. Um, we had talked about earlier the Education Quality Committee and that goal, talking about finishing up the student learning outcomes. And next on the docket was artistic expression. We talked a little bit about the possibility of that being a topic of the community forum, which I know we're not going to discuss tonight. That being said, I've been working on some preparation for that next body of work. So I took some photos last week at U32 of the artwork, although not like a gorgeous slideshow, but those are ready. I also have all the links to the, um, to the play that was done at U32 earlier this fall in the middle and high school concerts. And I had sent out an email earlier this week um, to the, all of the art and music teachers and Aaron, the theater teacher, uh, including the elementary folks to start to get some stuff um, for that slide. So that's one way that you and the community will be able to see that. So that's in the work. So I'm glad there's interest. Um, you Tonight, the principals are off given the topics um, on the agenda and the fact that they are so busy. Um, I thought they would appreciate not having to be here tonight. So that's why they're not. And um, in-service, I'll just quickly tell you about before we go into COVID. So um, the in-service day was fabulous. I want a um, huge shout out to Kara, who you're going to hear from tonight about Act 173, and Shelly Vermilia, our equity scholar in residence, and Ellen Dorsey, who's been doing uh, instructional coaching and some of the professional development and assessment work this year. Um, they took the lead in putting the morning together, and it was fabulous. Folks spent um, sometime in a keynote together, um, again, thinking through some aspects of identity, and then they um, engaged in a, a presentation with Kara related to Act 173. You're going to see a, a modified and shortened version this evening. And then, um, and then we spent time either uh, engaged in racial equity work, uh, either folks engaging in a protocol called Cour Courageous uh, conversations or engaging in some work um, of their choice related to racial equity. So that was the in-service day. The second half was just for teachers and it was a professional work day. Folks are working on report cards. They'll be uh, issued next week. In terms of COVID, um, Maya and Anna hit it on the, uh, it hit the nail on the head there. So lots to say. The very first thing I want to say is um, a huge and very public thank you to Maria, our COVID-19 coordinator, and to our school nurses. They have been working tirelessly to make sense of the change in guidance, to communicate it, and to keep up with our numbers, which have been uh, high since, since we've come back from December break. I would be remiss if I also didn't say Maria could not make it tonight. So I'm gonna do my best, but if there are technical questions, um, I'm gonna to have to defer them and come back to you for an answer. So um, let's see, last week, the, the school nurses and Maria meet uh, almost every Thursday with our pediatric liaison. And last week I had the opportunity to join them in that meeting and, um, and we, our pediatric liaisons is something that I think was really, for me, really powerful and a message I want to convey to you all and to the community. And that is, 
that right now our schools are in the business of risk reduction. We can't eliminate the risk. All we can do is reduce it. And our mitigation strategies have been working. The transmission rates in our communities are higher than they are in our schools. And I think that that's uh, really important. I know that there have been um, questions and concerns about the guidance. We're turning it around and changing our practices as soon as we are able to do so. Um, Maria and I last Thursday afternoon hosted a question and answer session for staff just voluntarily um, for anybody who wanted to come. I think we had about 25 people. We recorded that session for anyone who couldn't come but want, wanted to see the recording. And then we've generated along with the principals a question and answer document that we are updating so that our staff has the information that they know so that Ideally, their anxiety is lowered and we're not projecting it onto our students as well. Um, let's see. We um, did offer surveillance testing today. We're able to offer it next Monday. After that, we're not quite sure. Some of this I wrote in the community letter for you all. We've received lots and lots of tests and we're in the process of um, offering the consent forms to families so we can send home rapid antigen tests with kids or families can come and pick it up. At the elementary schools, they're talking to the school nurses. At U32, Maria just sent out today a permission form. And so, um, and we're, at, I checked right before this meeting and we had 66 people who had already signed that permission form. So that's good. We are offering a vaccination clinic on Saturday and um, at U32, but we're awaiting some of the final details. I think it's hosted by the Waterbury Ambulance Service, I think. And so as soon as we have all of the details, we'll make sure um, that that information is out there so folks can sign up. Maya and Anna mentioned we did modify our spectator proto protocols. So just starting this week, um, four, athlete, uh, four spectators per athlete or coach. Um, a big thanks to Hank and Orman, our athletic director. He's overseeing all of that. Um, and the, the school closures, I've kept you all bored uh, um, in, the, in the loop on that. We did have to close U32. We have very few subs in the district. And at U32, we've been covering all of our vacancies internally. And so teachers step up and they sub for each other, which is fabulous. And it means that they're not getting their planning time. So that's also exhausting. And we just, we hit a breaking point. Even with administrators, I went and subbed for a class. Like even with all of that, um, we just, we knew we couldn't do it. Um, and so that was that Friday that we couldn't have school. And then we came back on a Monday. And then the following Tuesday, we had, um, lots of school, lots of staff shortages across the district. That coupled with the cold, I see Michelle there kind of smiling. We were texting bright and early about that and the principals and I late at night trying to figure it out. Um, but we reached a breaking point then. Um, there is no remote learning. So just to be clear, and I said this in the community letter, there isn't a provision for that. What is very clear is that um, the State Board of Education has given our Secretary of Education, Dan French, the authority to, um, to grant waivers. If we get in a position where we're not um, going to meet the 175 student attendance days, then we can submit a waiver. I've been keeping track of all of that information really carefully with the principals. And if we get to that position, I will, I will uh, submit the waiver request. I will keep you all apprised of all of that. We're fine right now. We're kind of close in some schools, but we're okay right now. We um, also still have uh, possible snow days to get through. So there's that. And um, I think finally, just again, I don't have the numbers off the top of my head. I'll, I'll have numbers in the community letter tomorrow, but we have a lot, we've had a lot since January 1st of positive cases. And overall, um, when I looked uh, earlier this afternoon, um, we were at about 248 from the beginning of the year. If you remember last year, we had 10 positive cases and right now we're at 248. So um, again, just a huge 
um, thanks to the folks who are working hard under stressful conditions and, um, and to our parents as well for keeping their sick kids home. I know that's not easy, but that's the most important thing we can do. So that's the COVID report and any questions. I don't see any, Jen, thank you. Okay. So let's, let's move to 4.2, the Winooski Valley High School Choice Agreement. Uh, Michelle? Yeah, Michelle has taken the lead on this one. This is an area of experience and expertise that she has. So this is um, the annual agreement that the board approves the superintendent to sign every year. Um, for the high school. It's under, um, it's one of the state statutes. And I'm sorry, it's not filled out in the board packet. Um, but we can accept 5% or 10 students, whichever is fewer, to come into U32. And we can let out 10% or 40 students, whichever are fewer. So, um, 5% for us is 20 students. So we, we accept 10 and um, 41 students is our 10%. So um, we let out 40. We don't ever have 40 students going out. We always have um, more than enough students applying to fill the 10%. So the board would just need to appoint Jen to, to sign this agreement and I can answer any questions you might have about um, what the school choice is about. Thank you, Michelle. Could I have a motion, Lindy? Your hand is up. I just had a question. Is this, does this include the Montpelier U32 or is this? No, that's exchange. Okay. That's what I thought. Yep. Join us. Does a motion need to include um, the blanks there in the second paragraph? No, because I can write, I, I'll write those in. It, okay. Then I would move uh, to authorize uh, the superintendent to, uh, to sign the uh, choice of public high school collaborative for the 2022-23 school year. Second. Thank you, Jonas and Scott. Any other questions? Seeing none, all of those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries unanimously. Uh, let's move right on to Act 173 update. Kara, welcome. <laughs> Thank you for being patient. And just go ahead and you know do the presentation as we had planned. Uh, we were not sure about timing. I know that it's taking a long. This is an important subject. Kara's gonna try to keep it short, but I'm letting her just do what she had planned for, for today and we'll gain the time and the finance. This is important. Thank you, Flora, I appreciate it. <clears throat> I'll try to keep it as brief so I, I may skip through some slides because I see you working really hard to keep folks within the time frame. So um, I would invite people to ask questions um, as I won't be able to see you all as we go along. Um, I will be buzzing through it potentially a little bit quickly, so feel free to slow me down or um, pop in if you have any questions. All right, so Act 173. I started in this role six months ago as the Director of Student Services and um, started learning about Act 173 then, and um, I'm excited to share with you all tonight. So thank you for the time. Next slide. Um, these are the questions we'll be learning or we'll be answering today, learning about sort of what, what Act 173 is all about and what served as the genesis for this change in school regulations and um, what our next steps will be, what this will mean for our schools. Next slide, Mark. And I'll allow you to read this to yourself. It's from a summary from the Vermont Agency of Ed website. It's their explanation of, um, or their summary of Act 173. And next slide, Mark. And so we'll start with 
a conceptual understanding of the shifts brought about by Act 173. On the left side of your screen, you see siloing, the siloing of education that we hear about. And this represents sort of the, the current divisive nature unintentionally um, of the rules and regulations and the funding structures of special education right now. Um, Act 73, 173 serves to dismantle those silos and it encourages flexibility, collaboration and communication um, across the various domains in our schools in order to best support our students. Next slide, Mark. Thanks. And so to answer the question of where Act 173 is coming from, what information informs this act, we're quickly going to review two different uh, data sources, the UVM study for the funding of special education and the DMG or just district management group report. Again, these serve as the foundation and the justification for the changes brought about. Next slide. And so UVM's finding related to the funding structures of special education broadly, a move from the reimbursement model to a census-based funding model. I believe Suzanne, I wasn't here last week. I believe Suzanne talked about this um, in more detail and I'll allow you to read through those, those five items on the right side of the screen that discuss why a move into a census-based funding was important. And really what they, what was the report found was that the current funding structure, um, which will change as, as of July 1 of this year, when X-173 goes into place, incentivizes students being placed into special education and the identification of students. Um, it wasn't transparent and um, it misaligns with policy priorities. <clears throat> and the flexibility that we know is important for student learning. Next slide. And the DMG report was related more to programmatic um, practices within schools, and they made five suggestions or five opportunities to improve services in our schools. And these five opportunities align with the very foundation of Act 173, and we'll come around um, to these later, but these also serve as the foundation for multi-layer systems of support. And in just a moment, we'll explore what that means. So these five tenants really are, are the foundation of the movement forward as of July 1. Give you a moment to read through those. Next slide, Mark. All right, so what will these changes mean for special education? Conceptually, we can talk about the change from breaking down silos um, and increasing the collaboration and communication and really doing what students need. Um, what will that mean practically? We'll talk about that for a second because there's, there's various systems that will need to be in place in order to, to support that. Next slide. So we'll talk briefly about current special education eligibility and then how that will be different as of July 1. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that will speak to the way that the silos will be um, starting to be broken down a little bit. And you'll also start to see how we'll have to have some different systems in place to support these changes. And tangibly and more practically, these are one, this is one of the biggest shifts that we'll see in our day-to-day -day work with students that will be the result of Act 173. And that's in special education eligibility. So currently, if a school team is wondering if a student has a learning disability or a disability and they suspect they might be entitled to special education services, then that information is handed off to the evaluation team. And with the current regulations, the evaluation team can complete that evaluation and find eligibility um, in a disability area without really any other information um, about the student or from the school team. We know that's not best practice and there's a lot of work that's been done in order to work around those regulations because we know that's not best for kids. And yet the current rules really encourage the siloing and leaves this, this pocketed team to answer which silo does the student go into. 
as of July 1 and beginning next school year, when a school team asks, does a student have a disability? Do they have a specific learning disability? Um, rather than taking the student and derive, deriving their own data, the information will bubble up from the school's team. And so they'll ask the classroom teacher, the interventionist, maybe the art teacher will have insight to add, special educator, um, folks on the IEP team and say, tell me about what you've learned through the various interventions that you've tried. Let's all look at the data um, and tell me what you already know about this student's learning profile, their strengths and their needs in order to inform um, the evaluation process. And so that really expands the role and the responsibility out down into the general education setting. And that will be a new shift for us. And the answers really leans away from what silo do we put the student in? And it's not as divisive as to, as to answering the question, what does the student need in order to meet the grade level and learning expectations? Next slide. Okay, and so the Vermont Agency of Education has released or supports four different domains that we need within our schools in order for an effective um, transition into Act 173. And I'll go through these briefly and maybe in the future we can talk about them, but for the sake of time, um, I'll share them with you briefly. Educational support teams, coordinated curriculum, local comprehensive assessment systems, and needs-based professional development. And so educational support team is how do we layer in and measure supports for students and students' response to those supports when they're not meeting um, the expectations or their standards within the general ed classroom. Coordinated curriculum, how do we provide consistency across our schools and across the school district? Um, both how do we know that third graders in Calais, East Montpelier are learning the same in math? And then how do we know that all students as they move from kindergarten through graduation along the educational trajectory in Washington Central how do we um, measure and keep that consistent local comprehensive assessment system? How do we establish? How do we look at? Where do we go for data? And how do we use that data to inform our decisions about student learning? And then needs-based professional development is a, a macro take on that. How do we understand the broader needs of our schools and our, our systems in order to inform our professional development choices um, for our staff members? Next slide. And so with these four systems in place, the educational support teams, coordinated curriculum, comprehensive assessment system, and targeted need state based professional development, um, we have the establishment of Vermont multi-layer systems of support. Um, this graphic may be new to some of you, so I will walk you through it. And I, in your mind, just hold a vision of the silos and this is, this is a new take um, on a visual of education. And so here we look at the purple rectangle and that represents the general curriculum. And so that's the instruction, the universal instruction that all students are exposed to. And then you see the blue, the green and the orange layered on top of that. And that's the added support when students are struggling to meet the expectations. And what's unique about this um, from a prior model that we'll talk about in a second is that you'll notice that it's not all covered, right? It's not all covered in the blue or the green and then the orange. The support is only provided in the areas that's needed. And we'll talk about that in another second. Go ahead, Mark, to next slide. For a long time, the move away from the traditional sort of binary perspective on general ed or special ed was in a response to intervention framework, which was established in the early 2000s. And um, here, this is again, a move away from that binary, which kind of silo do, does a student go into and instead there's tiers. Um, and we're moving more towards layer because the tier model continues to encourage placements of students in this rigid and flexible domain. We might find a kid to be a tier one kid or a tier two kid, or perhaps they're a tier three kid, which indicates they need more instruction or more intensive intervention than most of the other students. And then on the right side of the screen, again, there, there's more of a nuance and there's more layers 
to student learning. So when we look at the visual on the right side of the screen, the top left of the rectangle that's just purple, that might be reading comprehension for a student. And so when we look at this, we see that they're doing well in their classroom and no added supports are provided. Perhaps uh, at the bottom right, we see math calculation and the classroom instruction was supported by an added layer um, that's indicated by the green. And then while that met some of the needs related to math, there was an additional layer provided in with the, indicated by the blue layer and then an additional layer provided by the orange. And by the time we're at that orange layer of support and on our third intervention, we know a lot about the student learning that we can share with the evaluation team. We know what aspects of the blue layer worked, we know what aspects of the green layer worked, and then we have a, a solid conceptualization of the nuances and individualization of that student's learn, learning profile that isn't available in the current regulations or in the, the RTI model that we see on the left. Next slide. Okay, and so this is the visual, as I had said, that's presented by Vermont multi-layer systems of support. And you'll see that a strong, effective, efficient MLSS system that we're moving towards aligns with the district management group's five opportunities for improving services to students that serves as the foundation of Act 173. So this slide just brings us around to how MLSS will meet the needs that were identified in the prior research conducted uh, in 2016 and serves to inform the necessity of these changes. Next slide. And some text, I'll allow you to read that through that for a moment. Um, some of the pillars, the important domains of a MLSS system as outlined by the Vermont Agency of Education. Next slide. And so what is next? Act 173 um, begins July 1 of this year. And so we have a lot, of, a lot of changes coming our way. And I should add that this presentation hasn't touched on a lot of the details that are embedded in Act 173, uh, but it's a big undertaking. And I've heard a lot of folks parallel this to um, proficiency-based grading. And so I'll share with you briefly a few slides around what we're doing in the coming months. Next slide. We're really fortunate in Washington Central and that we have a strong foundation of work and bodies of work that the leadership team and staff have been focusing on for various years. So we have some, we have a lot of work developed um, and some readiness for this change through these various um, bodies of work that are listed here on the screen. So we're certainly not starting from scratch. And again, Act 173 aligns with what we know is best for students. And so we've moved, been moving in this direction for some time. Next slide. And in terms of more tangible steps this winter and spring, what we've done so far as Jen spoke about a little bit earlier was a similar presentation was shared with the entire school district at our in-service yesterday. Um, and then two months ago, started sharing this information with case managers. And again, there'll be some shifts in their daily work that we started talking about and um, just preparing and beginning to ask questions together. I should also add that the rules, the special ed rules will not be released. They're hoping until in March to have some more clarity around it and solidification, but all we're sort of building the plane as we're flying it. Um, but we're doing the best that we can to get this information out as it comes out from the Agency of Education. And then our next steps, Julia and I are um, planning, doing some backwards planning for how we can be prepared for the next school year and how we can best use our time for our professional development in the winter and spring. 
There's a hub group within the leadership team. Uh, Alicia, myself, Ellen, Gillian have been talking about how to roll this out within our schools and to understand our readiness and our preparedness and move us forward from there. And then we've also surveyed our staff for interest in engaging in an Act 173 work group so that we can hear from and integrate the ideas and work of the folks in our classrooms every day. Next slide. So that concludes the presentation. That was really fast. I just dropped a lot of information. Um, there's tons of information on the Vermont Agency of Education and more is coming out every week. Again, this is sort of um, unfolding before us. There's more resources, technical assistance and updates. And then I'm happy to connect with anybody at any time to talk about the implementation at Washington Central, our goals and our progress and how things are going. And that concludes. Thank you, Kara. That was wonderful. I'm gonna open it up to board members in case they have questions that you were you were really good. So I don't any any questions or, or comments, Jonas. Can we get a copy of the presentation and can we uh, clip this section from the video of the meeting and make it available? Can I ask for an edit to that, Jonas, if that's okay? Yeah, of course. Well, I would offer, I could make another video that might be a little bit um, longer. I'm not known for being short-winded, so I also sometimes do better with a container. So maybe that's a better idea. Um, that, but I could provide one that kind of speaks more to the slides and isn't as rushed for people that might not, that, that could be helpful. I'm happy to do that in the next week, if that's an okay timeline. That'd be awesome, Kara, really, thank sure. you. Happy to, yep. Yeah, only if you have time, Kara. You don't need one more thing on your plate. Okay? <laughs> so take it off your plate if that doesn't look good, okay? Great. Thank, thank you, Floor. Chris? Yeah. Um, hi, Kara, thank you very much for that presentation. Um, do you have a sense, um, you and the staff, of what the board can do to support this transition? And what are what do you think the skills uh, are, are there skills that need to be developed in order to transition from um, our current system to this uh, multi-tiered system? Uh, and what is your sense as to what specific skills are needed, if they are? And I'm basically asking, what, what can we do to help support this transition in, in terms of funding or, or what have you? Yeah, Chris, thank you. That's a wonderful question. Um, I My sense in the moment in talking to people is that the biggest barrier is we all know that stress really shrinks the effectiveness of our brain and our ability to be open to thinking and creativity and change. And people are, stress levels are so high right now. Um, and that to me feels like the biggest barrier. In terms of where I think some of the challenges might be, Data-based decision-making um, involves some cultural shifts that I think can feel to educators that it undermines their educator intuition. Um, and I think it can feel like we're moving towards a, my worry I should say, is that um, it can feel like we're moving towards too technical of a, of an understanding of learning. And um, I'm just curious about how that will go for folks. So I would say, for example, I, I asked a case manager, how does it feel to you when I say learning is a science? And there was a strong reaction to that. And she said, well, learning feels more to me like an art. Um, and, I, and she was nervous about Act 173 because she felt like it's too much of a tech, we're moving the database decision-making. So I'm not sure what systems might need to be in place for that. Um, I'm thinking of the questions and the themes that came out of the in-service the other day. There was questions around interventions and what interventions we're gonna use, a shared definition of interventions. Um, tier one instruction, general ed classrooms. And I would invite Jen to answer this too. Sorry, I have so many responses to that. It's hard for me to um, clarify. I think in terms of support, really 
bolstering the support and the bodies of work, sorry, the bodies of work that have already been done, the, um, I think, or that are in process, the maybe third to last slide. And um, there's a real barrier, I think, in terms of time and everything people have on their plates. That I think might be the primary, the challenge people have so much going on. Thank you, Kara. Okay, thanks very much. Yeah, thank you yeah. all. You all. Jen, do you have something to, to add or are we ready to move? Uh, no, I would just say I agree with Kara. We, we have a, a good foundation. We just have further to go and it's creating that time and the space for the ongoing uh, collaboration and work together for consistency. I heard that theme yesterday as well in terms of um, just clarity around roles, responsibilities, um, expectations for students, those things. Clarity in a parent educator role, though more, more of those. They, they came up and those are the things that I think that work group and the hub group will be focusing on for professional learning. Yeah. Thank you, Kara. That was that was wonderful. Thank you for taking the the time and and the board will continue to support <laughs> your your work on on there. And we I I believe by everybody paying attention today, we're creating that shared understanding of of where we're going and what you need. So thank you. Uh, oh, Ursula, do you have a last minute question? Go ahead. Not a question, just a super quick thing. Can we as a board kind of decide like at the very beginning of next year or early in our next year to revisit Chris's question on what they think they need when they've been there? Um, it, I feel like it will help us get an understanding as we're moving into developing the next budget. Great, thank you, Ursula. Yeah, no, take it. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna give everybody three minutes. We've been sitting for two hours and eight minutes. So take, take five and we'll be, we'll, we'll be back shortly. All right, 8.13, let's get started. And we're gonna pick it up right at the finance committee. Uh, we have uh, a couple of informational reports uh, because we are, uh, you know, late on time, and I really want to be able to get us done, hopefully in a half an hour, unless there is any questions on, on the monthly reflection or the annual uh, report information of facts on page 27, 29. I'm going to move right into the discussion and action with just one thank you for Virginia, Matt, Susie, and, and their entire team. And I know I'm forgetting names, but thank you. Uh, and then let's move into 5.21, energy consultant. I see Robbie is here uh, with us and Jeff is with us and Chris O'Brien is with us. So Chris, I'm gonna let you go ahead and run this quickly. Okay, floor. So I'm, <clears throat> thank you. I'm gonna uh, be reading right from the summary that I provided to the finance committee. Um, so the board had authorized Jeff Forward from Forward Thinking Consultants to review the net metering opportunities for Washington Central Unified Union School District. Forward Thinking has completed the review of the net metering proposal from Kingsbury Hydro and our electric bills from GMP for Central Office U32 Berlin and Doty and has offered recommendations in the report included in the packet. The report indicates that the agreement presented by Kingsbury Hydro is fair and reasonable and estimated savings through this partnership are between $10,000 and $15,000 a year in utility costs. It is unlikely the district could find a better deal now or in the near future and should lock in this arrangement by signing a 10 year extension to the net metering agreement with Kingsbury Hydroelectric. Advice from forward thinking is to wait to explore net metering opportunities for the schools in the Washington Electric Co-op Service Territory, which is Callis, East Montpelier and Rumney. Right now, renewable energy policy is in flux, both nationally and in Vermont. Bills at the national and state level may increase federal tax credits and state incentives for renewable energy projects for schools and municipalities. 
it is possible that these state and federal policies will improve the return on investment for renewable energy development for schools in the future. And we are advised not to lock into any long-term agreements at this time. Uh, so recommended board actions would be um, that Jeff recommends that the board authorize the superintendent to sign the 10-year net metering contract with Kingsbury Hydroelectric. Thank you, Chris. It, could, I, could I have a motion and then we'll discuss? <laughs> I'll, I'll move that the board authorize the superintendent to sign the 10-year net metering contract with Kingsbury Hydroelectric. Thank Second. you, Jonas. Thanks, Scott. Any, any questions? It was very good. Right. Okay, so let's go ahead and vote. All those in favor of the motion as read by Jonas and second by Scott, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. I just want to thank Roby for being here for your patience. And I especially want to thank, thank Jeff and Chris O'Brien for all the work that went into this. So thank you. Thanks, folks. Okay. And let's move right along into 5.2, the general fund and budget communication. I'm actually going to move that to a just below and let's do let's have Suzanne do the general fund balance first so that then we would have to hold the warning and everything together and then we'll talk about our next steps does that make sense okay go go ahead it's Suzanne could you talk about the the memo that you just sent today sure um I received an update from the AOE uh, with new equalized pupil numbers and they're decreasing. Uh, the statewide equalizing ratio changed from 0.95112 to 0.94732. And that, even though uh, the amount that we were calculating for the early college students was the accurate amount, that percentage change decreased our equalized pupil calculation. And so the new equalized pupil number is 1,413.39. Um, this uh, resulted in an estimated increase to the education spending per equalized pupil and an increase to the estimated equalized tax rate. And I provided in the memo, the new estimated tax rates by town, uh, based on the two scenarios provided by the tax commissioner. One of the issues uh, that occurs with the warning is that the warning requires us to put in the per uh, equalized pupil dollar amount, as well as the percentage increase year over year, which in order to provide that, we have to pick one of those scenarios from the tax commissioner, one of those property yield dollar amounts, we had uh, discussed last time not choosing. Um, and I think we can provide the chart and show both of them, but the warning itself requires us to say the education spending per equalized pupil and the percentage increase from the prior year. <clears throat> and in order to get that, I have to have a base property yield number. So what I'm looking for here is uh, board action or board uh, direction on utilizing a property yield number, whether it's the, the more conservative $12,937 or the $13,846, which, um, which assumes that the legislature is going to utilize the full $90 million uh, ed fund balance to reduce tax rate. Thank you, Suzanne. So in essence, what, oh, Scott, go ahead and then. Uh... You first, Laura. Okay, so what I want to say, in, in a, the, the language that we need to change in the warning that we already uh, approved, that I'm hoping everybody can sign tomorrow and Friday, just tomorrow and Friday are the two days that you'll have to sign, and then it has to be done by Monday, is in Article 6 is the, is the, is, is the change. So if we agree to do the scenario B, 
that is the more conservative, right? So that's that, that's what we had said. It, the, the language will read, shall the voters of Washington Central Union School District approve the school board to expend $36,169,267, which is the amount the school board has determined to be necessary for the ensuing fiscal year. It is estimated that this proposed budget, if approved, will result in the education spending of 20,391 per equalized pupil. This projected spending per equalized pupil is 5.03% higher than the spending for the current year. That's the change. So I'm looking for a motion to, Scott? I'll move that, what you just said. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Scott. Second. Sorry, Suzanne just got this this afternoon and we've been definitely back and forth. Uh, second by Chris, right? Okay. Uh, any discussion, any question on what she just explained? Diane. So Governor Scott said something about 45 million. I mean, do we have any calculations about the middle of the road? I, I guess I just worry that we put something out there and then it, it is going to be different um, is, is just, it always is different, but it's usually different to the good for usually, but um, so that's just, I'm wondering. Uh, the tax commissioner did not provide a middle of the road and the, um, the way that he calculates that property yield is, is impacted by so many different things. I don't feel comfortable trying to calculate that middle of the road. Um, I mean, I guess we could estimate and say 45 million halfway through, but uh, um, that's not what the tax commissioner gave us. Yeah, and I think that the timing is the main thing for us right now because this has to be signed tomorrow and Friday, like I'm saying, because they, it needs to go to the printers. We need to change it, share it with all our town clerks. So that's where we are. It's, Jonah, I saw another hand before. Yeah, we, that's me. But, okay, so Jonas. Um, I would suggest that my initial instinct is to take the more conservative road Suzanne, I, if I'm understanding you correctly, the downside would be that we raise more money than we need. If we took the conservative route and it turned out that the legislature did end up spending some amount of money, then what is then, then what is, what is the downside of taking the conservative route? Um, it doesn't mean that we uh, raise too much money. We we raise the same amount. The, the thirty six million stays the same. Um, the downside is that we are putting out to the taxpayers and the voters that this is what our estimated tax rate will be, and the more conservative one shows a, an increase in the tax rate for Berlin and Worcester. Um, so that's that's really your downside is that uh, you potentially lose some voters because they're worried about their tax rate, um, which may not come to fruition because that property yield may be different. Thank, thank you. Um, I, I, I would, just to follow up on that, I would still favor the conservative approach without assuming uh, the ad balance um, because the increases are low enough that I think that that is appropriate, especially considering what we did with our budget last year, which was to reduce the raw overall spend. Um, I think that the, these tax numbers look look okay to me um, without that use of, of $90 million. Thank you, Jonas. Scott? I agree with Jonas. And I would also point out that I would rather lose voters on this budget by um, by showing you know the worst case scenario, then lose them on next year's budget because they don't trust us to give them straight. Depending on you know what actually happens, if um, if we were to estimate high and then the um, the state came in, um, you know with uh, with a worse sort of tax 
um, picture. So anyway, I think the conservative approach is the way to go. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. I, I think in the in the past we have had this happen a couple of times when we have had posted the good news and it usually gets that if if it if it changes for the best we can you know always make sure that our communication plan is 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 good so that we will send that information out to 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 all residents so that they that they know that something has changed are we ready to vote Ooh, Jonas I see a hand up yeah sir I just remembered this question I Suzanne, if I remember uh, from the last meeting correctly, that this per pupil, e per equalized pupil spending would put us over what the penalty threshold would be if the penalty threshold was being imposed this year? Uh, not after, th there are certain things that we're allowed to deduct, which are basically your debt service. Okay. And so when you take those things off, no, we would not be penalized if there was a threshold this year. Got you. Thank you. Okay, great. So all those in favor Wait, of the- I, Sorry, can I ask yes. I, I don't have the verbiage to this. Is this- I, I did, I just, I emailed it to you, Lisa. Did I miss you? Okay. Um, just okay. a few minutes ago, literally. Okay, okay, thanks. See it? It, okay. It's in your inbox, I see it, Lisa. Okay, thank you. Right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Hearing none, the motion carries. Thank you. So uh, back to you, uh, the fund balance recommendations to see on page 40. Uh, the board touched on this last week and had some uh, discussion around it. If uh, currently in your budget and currently based on that article six that you voted on, uh, $325,468 of general fund balance is being used as revenue to offset the tax rate. If the board does not approve use of that full amount, that per pupil uh, number will change. And so will that percentage rate. So um, that's why I wanted to pair the, the article up with with this uh, section. Um, so some direction from the board uh, or certainty around whether the full 325, 468 is the will of the board to use as revenue to offset the tax rate. Is that an old hand, Jonas, or a new hand? Uh, it's, it, it's an old one, but I will use the opportunity to make the motion if you'd like. Yeah. Uh, I move that the board authorize the use of $325,468 of general operating fund balance as offsetting revenue for the fiscal year 2023 general fund budget. Thank you, Jonas. Could I have a second? Second. Thank you, Diane. Chris. Um, I'm just, um, uh, hold on. Okay. Um, I just have a, a process question. Um, we just voted on the tax rate, right? And um, if we voted this down, we'd have to go back and vote again on the tax rate. Okay, so in the future, when we have things like this, where one is a trickle down on the other, we should flip the order um, because- that, That's how we had it, Chris. It was my mistake trying to, that's what I said before. We had four point, but then when I introduced <laughs> Susan, I said, start with this, but it, okay, so just just so, because so, it, yeah, you know we're back, you know more or less bound. I think we're doing it anyway, but just from a process standpoint, I would hope let's yeah, we had said for five point two, and I just right. okay, thank you. That's that's my only comment on this. Yeah, I'm fa I'm supporting it, but, but anyway, thanks. Okay. Any other? Okay, seeing, oops, sorry. Seeing none, eh, the, the board support. Sorry. Eh, all those in favor of approving the motion eh, to use the fund balance 
Yeah. In the amount just read by Chris. By Jonas, sorry, Jonas, and second by Diane. Sorry, the phone threw me up. There's somebody that is not muted. That I think it's Jonathan. There might be a oh, there it goes. Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. The motion carries. All right. Finally, the we're gonna do the roof bid, and I haven't forgotten that we're gonna talk about the other stuff. So the roof bid. Could I have a motion? No, somebody. I'm not certain where that is. It doesn't have a page number. Or yeah, the minutes come next. Chris or Suzanne, do you have a um, some language for a motion for the roof bid that just happened two days ago and then was at finance? I'll, I'll make a motion. Um, I move that we. Oh, um, um, award the bid for the U32 roof project to Evergreen Roofing in the amount up to, I think it's $270,000, uh, which takes into account the bid itself and a 10% contingency. Scott and, and Kari, am I yeah. far off on so, that? that I, I'm amazed at your memory, Chris. Yeah, that, wow. that's it. Yeah, so and Chris, is, Chris is right here and he can correct us, but that was the amount. Yeah, Do I, and I okay. second. Okay. Can you say it one more time, Chris? No, that memory <laughs> cell is on now. <laughs> Move that we award the bid for the U32 roof project to Evergreen Roofing in the amount of 270000 which include, includes a 10% contingency, the amount of up to $270,000, which includes the amount of a 10% contingency. So and then just it, yeah, to Evergreen Roofing LLC. Did you say that? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Okay, great. I didn't say LLC, but yeah. It, that does okay. Um, okay. And who's second it? Scrap. Okay. Any question? Rosie, your hand is up, and Lisa, your hand is up. I just want to make sure you don't forget my warning. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, no, no, we're, yeah, we're not going to forget your warning. We're going to do that one right not now. now. We won't yeah. forget it now. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, sorry. That was my mother in law. I apologize, but yeah, really sorry. It's 90. Um, all those in favor of approving awarding the bid to Evergreen Roofing, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the eyes have it. Uh, one one little thing to to share with you about about this uh, is that we are uh, we're accepting the the bid and we're applying for a waiver uh, because we just received we you should, we asked five different vendors to bid. We received just two bids, and it by law we're required to have three bids. And Susanne is already on top of it. So just so that you know, okay. Um, Moving right along. Yeah, so that we have two things. Uh, the warning for Rosie. Well, it's for you. Well, yeah. But... Okay, let me just move in. In four? Yeah. For clarification, the language that you added for the Berlin for the Berlin Town Center. I'm presuming that's going at the end of your warning as it stands right now as an additional article. And it's not a separate warning. Yeah, it can I, all go on the same ballot, correct? I will say so, because otherwise it would be too confusing to right. have a separate ballot. So it would be an article within that ballot. Jen, your hand is up. I had the same question, so I don't know if you want to put something, a motion on the table to discuss or not, but I definitely have some questions about how we can support you given the action tonight. So A, whether or not that then becomes Article 9 in the same ballot, and 
um, you had talked about the memorandum of understanding and sharing that in the annual report. And I'm a little worried about that time-wise because we're right up. So I just want to figure that out together. I don't want to, I don't want you to be misled thinking, I'm just a little worried about that. We, we need to get it turned over into the printer ASAP. And um, I, I don't know that I can, I, I'm just worried that we won't get it in the school report, that we have to think about other ways to get it out there. Thank you, Jen. That is a good point. We might just have to put it in on our website and not be able to get it on, because I don't know that Nick can turn it around that, that quickly. And our deadline is Monday, right? So we have to have everything done by Monday. But did everybody have a chance to review page, page four and five? That's the warning that we are about to approve. So could I have a, a motion, uh, Lindy or Chris? M mine was just, I think the article nine is different from the informational page. So on the ballot, we have to have the article nine, but then the information page might not get into our annual report, but we would distribute it either electronically through Front Porch Forum, various ways that way. Yeah. Thank you, Landy. Could somebody make a motion to uh, carry? You're, you're muted. Sorry about that. I was just going to point out a typo on the signature page that Ursula has listed as Berlin. And then I'll move that we um, Adopt, is that the word, the verb? Mm -hmm. Adopt this warning with um, the amendment of Article 9. Second. Thank you, Terry um, and Scott. Sorry, I would also point out that my name doesn't appear on the list of school directors. On page uh, six yeah, of yeah, the Yeah, you're absolutely packet. right. Yeah, I don't know where that came from. We'll make we'll we'll make we'll make those changes, and then uh, any other questions? Floor. Yep. I might add that if we can get at least a link to where the memorandum of understanding is going to be on the website, I would be happy to. I can. I still have a little time to get it in my own town's annual report, mm -hmm. so that would somewhat helpful and I'm more than happy to spread the word to the other town clerks as well if they're willing. That would be wonderful. Thank you, uh, Rosie. And, and our, dead, our deadline is Monday for our annual report? Yes. Okay. Well, and sooner oh. if possible, it would be Friday. Right. 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 Yeah, Jen? Okay. Yeah, sooner would definitely be better. We've been getting emails from the uh, from Ben Merrill, like, where is it? Can I have it? Can we get it going? So um, if you could sign it by Friday, that would be yes. amazing. We can send him some of the other stuff, but um, yeah, we're, we're at the 11th hour. Yes. Yeah, definitely okay. for signing, we, the signature's got to be done tomorrow yes. and Friday. It, Monday is just, is, is off to the printers, literally. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Can I just ask a logistical question? So we go to the district office to sign it, right? Yeah, and, yeah, I'll explain what, yeah, so central office for four members that have never been there is right next to U32. And, uh, and you would just walk in with your mask and Melissa will be ready and she'll have it there for you, for, for you to sign. And what hours is she going to be there tomorrow and Friday? <laughs> yeah. Melissa usually is there by about 7.45, definitely eight. And then one of us will be around uh, past 4.30. But yeah, and so, and if you so think Friday, that, somebody will be there by 730. Yeah, yeah. And, if right, you can, and we'll all know. Yeah, if you can do it, just uh, be, I, I'm sure there's always flexibility. So email, email uh, Melissa or, or Jen or, or, me, yeah, email or Michelle. And we'll, and we'll, we'll make it happen for you. We'll figure, even if we're going to meet you somewhere to sign it, we'll make it happen. And can I just ask quickly, because this is my first time and I don't want to mess it up, but so 
Michelle, who has lots of experience. Is there anything else, Michelle, that we need to be thinking about to get this finalized and turned around? Is that everything? Okay. That's everything. Okay. This was the biggest thing that we were waiting on. Yeah. Okay. All right. So yes, if you're if those hours are problematic for you, just find us, find us via email or phone at central office. We'll figure it out. Okay. Thank you. Lindy, is that a question, Hen? It, it is. It's another typo. I think um, McKaylin's name doesn't have all the capitals in it, and she's not saying anything, but oh, I think Oh, thank correct. you, Lindy. Uh, yeah, <laughs> You're yeah, correct. Yeah, sorry, I didn't, I, okay. I should have reviewed that page. I didn't, it's, it must be a document there, but yeah, sorry. Okay. Jonathan? Yeah, just quickly, um, Ursula is listed as uh, in Berlin. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. We we just corrected that. It's not correct. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor of adopting the warning. Uh, one, one more. Sorry. Yes. Um, I don't see Vera on here. She's yeah. there. She's there. Right it's one, me. two, three, oh, I see. four. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry about that. I don't know how, yeah, I don't know how Jonas is not in the format, but we'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah. And yeah. All those in favor of approving the warning with the amendments, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Okay, none. The motion carries. Uh, McKellen, I saw your hand up. Is that? No. Nope. It's okay. So now moving to the consent agenda. We're gonna approve the minutes. Yes, I will move to approve the minutes of December 1st, December 9th, December 15th, 2001, and January 5th and January 12th, 2022. Second. Okay, thank you, Scott. Any revisions to those? Any comments? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Uh, and now we have the board orders. Lindy. <laughs> I have them open. All right. Just trying to find my mouse to scroll around. Um, I make a motion to accept the board order of 12 16 21 through 1 19 22 in the total amount of $990,744.19. 19 Thank you. Could I have second. a second? Second it. Thanks, Diane. Any questions? Any? Okay. Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the board orders as read by Lindy, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Hearing none, the motion uh, carries. So before we move into, in, into the last little part uh, in the discussion uh, discussion part, the last question, I just wanted to get the consent agenda done. But uh, Jen and myself are looking for some uh, uh, feedback from, from the board in, in, in just our communication plan for the budget. And that's where I wanted to loop in a little bit of the, of the, the next community engagement. So it's all it's all together. We haven't forgotten it, but I'm just leaving the best for last. So now that everybody's really sleepy and tired, do you have any 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 thoughts or any recommendations different from what we've typically done? Put it on the website. We're gonna to try to record our next meeting so that we have a recorded meeting of the budget. Now that we own the budget, that we'll present the budget. And so please. Uh, speak. 
besides the report. We, we heard you loud and clear in the report. We, the report that is going out is a, a streamlined report. It includes the table. We're sharing the tables with all our town clerks. They have access to all of the to all of the information. The report is going to have some pictures in color because that was I already shared that with you. But it's a it's a more like Ben is calling it reporting, <laughs> not as flashy, but it would still be have some color. <laughs> Thoughts? Um, okay. All right. So personnel. Sorry, Laura, I just want to say one thing. Um, yeah. Suzanne had had some ideas about uh, reorganizing some of the budget stuff on the web page too. So it's just more obvious and more direct. So um, if that's okay with the board, we're just going to go ahead and, and do that um, so that it it's more supportive for you all as well. Okay. And yeah, Suzanne had some good ideas. Okay. That sounds great. Uh, personnel. So uh, nothing to report that's a change from when you last saw it. So there was nothing in the packet, nothing, no changes. Uh, vacancies, I told you, we review them every um, week. We have uh, some paraeducator positions still to fill. Um, we, we have the driver's ed position. I've talked to you about that last week. So we're going to do the memorandum of understanding for the semester, and we're working on finding qualified folks for next year. Still that outstanding um, Berlin special ed position, we're making do with one less instructional coach. And um, we owe oh, in the student support position that has been open for quite a while at Romney. Um, there are a few new applicants uh, we reviewed. Well, Carla told us we didn't look at them in school spring, but there are there is some movement. So hopefully um, we're getting closer and closer to filling those vacancies. Um, for the time being, um, it just continues to, you know, add some strain to our system. It causes us to have the drivers at MOU, but um, we're hopeful we'll get everything filled. The one other thing I guess I would say is, can't remember if I mentioned this to you last time, but we do have a driver vacancy. We we offer transportation um, as part of some students' IEPs um, and or for students who are experiencing homelessness. We're contracting it out, and it's um, really expensive. And so we're looking at um, adjusting the pay rate so that maybe we can make a driver position more attractive. That will ultimately be a very fiscally responsible decision. We'll save money in the long run. So we talked about that this morning. That's it. Thank you, Jen. That's a wonderful. I, I have two more pieces of information before I let you go. One is that you received the email from Rosie. We don't need to, if you are running for the board, you don't need your signatures. You just need to send the form to her and how you want your name or to your local clerk. We have received an application for, she has received an application for Callas. There is still, just make sure that if you're communicating with anybody else that is thinking about running for the vacancies that they know, because, you know, I don't know if you're communicating, I know Callis has been very active, but if you're communicating with somebody in Middlesex, just to make sure that they, they know that there is still the position open. We had somebody that was thinking of running for the Central Vermont Career Center, but there's still an open position for uh, somebody for a uh, member at large for the Central Vermont Career Center. So if you have somebody in mind, it has to be done by Monday. So hopefully there's a couple of people maybe in the Worcester area that are thinking about it right now, but I just wanted to put that out there for, for, for all of you. Um, Chris? Sure. Yeah. Is, is the deadline for all the positions on Monday? Yes. You have to yeah. get through it. The mailing yeah. to Rosie. Okay. Yeah. Get to Rosie or to your local clerk, and they will get it to Rosie. But you know, you can go directly to to Rosie and just okay. get it to 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 them. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Just so I've understood the the signature requirement on petitions. Gone. They passed. They passed S two twenty three. Yeah, they passed S two twenty three this morning. Yeah. Well, not passed. The governor signed it because they had already put it on his desk last week. Yeah, so no need to worry about the signatures anymore. Okay, anything that I'm forgetting? Uh, any board reflections? It's 10 minutes of nine. 
exercise has been too long. <laughs> no, it was a good meeting. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. We'll, we'll send you the updated memorandum of understanding and we'll see you at our next meeting. Okay. See ya. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Kara. Right. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Jen, Good night. Good night. Bye. Thank Good you. Stuff. Thanks.